On today's episode, we've got our reactions to bad times at the El Royale, as well as a deep retrospective on the original Halloween. Let's get started. This is Off the Break Podcast, presented by Silver Screen Insider. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Off the Break Podcast. Yes, I'm taking over for Cody uh, today, and then Cody was taking over with you, Eric, last week, and yeah. G and I have just been going back and forth on this. We just can't get the gang back together. No, not yet. Maybe in maybe in a future episode it'll happen, <laughs> but for now it's just you and me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so today we wanted to talk about bad times at the El Royale, because you and I both were finally able to see it yeah no cody cody saw first man i saw this and she was supposed to give us our her thoughts on that but yeah we'll just have to make do Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean i guess you can start us off you saw it a little a couple days after me so right what what were your thoughts on it uh initial thoughts i had a lot of fun with this i really do Uh, i believe it was uh drew goddard that was the yeah writer the writer director director. on this Coming back from Cabin in the Woods, I love that movie. I think yeah, it's, it's been a while since that came out. Six exactly, years, I think. Yeah. Like, this is his return to directing, but this time it's not so much a comedy spoof in a way. It's more just like a drama thriller comedy-esque uh, yeah, it's a period lot of piece twisting mixed in. Multiple kind of storylines, mystery noir kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, period I, piece. Yeah, and I loved all the blending of it all. I think that he did... Such a great job of blending all those pieces together. Like, I thought uh, the elements of the mystery were appealing enough. I thought the interactions with characters' storylines. And it really does – the thing about that also is that it really does a great job at intertwining everyone's characters while at the same time exploring them separately. Mm -hmm. And I really thought that was well handled, which he's such a terrific writer. Like, that's not too surprising. But it's just something that we don't see often in the Yeah, that is true. I mean – I got a very Pulp Fiction vibe from it, just with with the multiple kind of storylines and interweaving character interactions seen mm-hmm. from different people's points of view. Yeah. Um, at least as far as this year goes, it's definitely one of the most uh, like unique um, original stories. For sure. Like it wasn't, as far as I know, it wasn't adapted from anything. It was just kind of, mm-hmm. you know, Drew Goddard has been working on this for a while and he just put it out there and it really... Uh, stands on its own against other movies. I think I <laughs> going back to you thinking like it's not adapted to anything. It did make me wonder though if there really is an El Royale hotel like in between the Nevada and California. <laughs> like I'm hoping there is, but I, I yeah. I mean, I guess I never. Think, like, it's not I guess real. I never doubted that because mm-hmm. I mean, this movie is definitely kind of an uh, an, homo- an homage to older kind of hotel thrillers. They're kind. It's sure. There's yeah. probably not enough of them to be like a legitimate genre but there's mm-hmm. you know there's enough of them that people have kind of caught on to them um i can't i read an interview with drew goddard where he was talking about the different uh movies that inspired him with this and a lot of them are based and take place in real hotels or mm-hmm. motels so i wouldn't be surprised I, I would i would say it's probably real but the whole like absurd concept of you know right there on the border you have the rooms on this side of the, the in the California the California rooms are a dollar more than yeah. the Nevada rooms. It did play up to a lot of its humor quite well, though. I thought like it was just little. Yeah, no, like there was that, yeah, there, the humor was more in like kind of little, just absurd little off the cuff remarks, yeah. or there wasn't any like jokes, like set up punchline kind of things. Right. It was just kind of everything like was a little to. off, mm-hmm. and the characters were all like John Hamm's character. I thought he was hilarious. Just he was the, hilarious the way he talks yeah. and <laughs> interacts with people. Mm-hmm. No, it's definitely a funny movie, but it's the kind of funny where, at least in my theater, a lot of people were like, "What." the heck yeah like what just happened what's going on so i feel def- like there was definitely moments in my screening where uh people were just taken aback yeah they're like, they're Come like oh on. did not expect that to happen <laughs> and i loved it like i haven't i haven't seen that often this year so yeah i mean also it, it it's a longer movie but it it did it never really dragged for, for me other than a little bit towards the end with, yeah i would say that too with chris hemsworth's character which was a little disappointing because like the sure. marketing and just kind of the way it was played up was he was just like this 
bizarro, crazy out there character. Which and he ev- was. And, and everybody's it's so like, much fun to watch. Everybody's like, whoa, Thor, Chris Hemsworth, what, what, what yeah. is this? Um, he ultimately was my least favorite part of the movie. Oh, okay. Um, there was a lot of people that were saying like his performance stole the movie. So I was, I was kind of curious. I don't know. I just thought he was kind of like a, all of the other characters, they had, you know, varying degrees of, um, developed backstories, obviously. And with a movie with this many characters, you can't spend a whole lot of time on everybody naturally. But with him, all I really got was that he was just Charles Manson. Like, that, <laughs> that's all I got from it. I didn't really understand. It, everything he was saying was just like a really generic kind of cult leader. And maybe that was the point. But I don't know. I just thought his character was really rushed. He was good at, with what he had, I guess. But mm-hmm. compared to everybody else in the movie, there was there was nothing. The, the extent of his characterization is when... Um, Darlene Sweet's like, I've seen men like you who yeah. blah, 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 blah. It's like his whole character is summed up in that one sentence and it's just she basic. has to blatantly spell it out for us. Right. I don't know. Other than the fact that his shirt was unbuttoned, I couldn't describe him. <laughs> I couldn't, you know, come up with unique things about him that yeah. aren't super generic sounding. No, I, I could definitely, I can definitely see why for you that would be like the weakest part. Like, I, I do think like, he was one of the best performances of that, despite having such a limited amount of uh, backstory and character to go off of. Like, I think even though, like, they tried to set up a little bit of, like, the backstory with that subplot, like, in the end, it, there just wasn't quite the payoff other than, like, a big finish. Yeah. I mean, y- you don't need to know. I'm one of the biggest advocates. You know, you don't have to know everything about characters. True, yeah. But a lot of the stuff that we don't know about him impacts how at least in my opinion or my experience, negatively impacted the other characters around him. Like Dakota Johnson's character and her sister are directly tied to Chris Hemsworth's character. Yeah. And we're just, you know, we're just kind of told that Dakota Johnson's sister is like obsessed with this guy and he's in love with her. He must have brainwashed her. Because, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, definitely. Charles Manson, <laughs> you know, he's just a cult leader. That's what, right, that's what right. cult people do. But... I don't, there was just nothing there. It was just kind of like, oh yeah, you know, he's a crazy cult leader, and he, he brainwashed her sister, and mm. there just there wasn't any sort of emotional tie that had me like wondering, like, oh no, is is her sister's loyalty going to be torn between her sister and Chris Hemsworth? Yeah, because like there's that shot where it kind of shows her looking at Dakota Johnson. I'm pretty sure like right after she got shot, and you think maybe for a second she's gonna snap and turn on chris hemsworth because like maybe it took that maybe it took the death of her sister to break her out of this Mm -hmm. brainwashed state but i don't know i just thought that that was it wasn't so out of left field but it was it it felt rushed compared to all the other characters sure and especially because like he chris hemsworth's character being not a part of the actual hotel or well yeah he's not in it until like the last 20 15 20 minutes yeah um, and in the end, he's kind of just thrown in, and he's like, "Oh, so this is what happened yeah. <laughs> in two thirds of the movie." <laughs> so was yeah. there was there a character uh, at all that was a standout or was a favorite to you? Like, I like the I like I like the I like the main relationship between Jeff Bridges or uh, Father Flynn mm-hmm. and Darlene Sweet. I thought yeah. that was really nice, um, especially like how it it goes through like. It's like, oh, they're, it's kind of cute. He has a crush on her. He he must like her. And then you see him trying to, like, what you, at the moment, you assume is date rape her. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God, what the heck? And then mm-hmm. she crashes his head over with a bottle, and it's like, oh, my gosh. That was one like, of those what the heck like, moments. Like, double TF. Yeah, that um, caught the but then, audience at my screen. But then it comes, it pulls another 180, mm-hmm. and they're friendly again, and I it totally worked. That was probably my favorite part yeah, of the movie. Yeah, I, I can totally agree like, with that. Like, their, their arc right there went through so many different mm-hmm. flips and twists. Yeah, I thought for sure it was going to be a straightforward, um, her escaping from him type of story. Yeah. But in the end, like, there was payoff, I guess, for both yeah. of them. No, I like that, and then by extension, I even though it wasn't really as developed mm-hmm. as excuse me, as I hoped, um, his relationship with Miles, the concierge, I thought was was a touching part of the movie. Miles was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, I love him. I, that character, I just, 
there's so much stuff that happens to him and like yeah. what he, and all the stuff that he has to go through. And I loved it. I well, ate it. I had a I, I, every I, second. It was, Miles was an interesting part of the movie to me because I liked him at first. Obviously, he's this kind of inept, you know, young guy just kind of left to run this incredibly yeah. nice, fancy hotel. It's mm-hmm. like you're just gonna leave this to this little kid. Yeah. Um. So I liked him at first, and then I thought he was dead when. Jeff Bridges walks by his room and he right. has the needle hanging out of his arm. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, jeez. I guess he's a drug addict and he, o- he OD'd. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of liked him. But then he comes back and he keeps talking to Jeff Bridges about, he's like, I've done bad things. And I like that at first, but then I feel like he was kind of, or Drew Goddard was kind of repeating that a lot. Like instead of oh, showing sure. us, instead of showing us, how guilt ridden miles is or how troubled he is he just has him tell jeff bridges right no show just tell yeah, yeah. all all tell right, right for the most part and then at the end when it's revealed that then it's show. he was a veteran and i was like okay that actually makes a lot of sense right in hindsight i still would have liked him to ha- find different ways to show the yeah. tortured soul that miles has been the whole time without just repeating the same beat in a weird way i get where you're coming from but in a weird way i liked it because when they finally did show it was so surprising for that oh yeah it was it was like that one was out of left field but it totally worked because before they even showed like he admits something um and i guess we're doing a few spoilers here i guess i should have had a warning ahead but um he just like gives something away where i was just like holy crap this guy (laughs) might just be insane but then the showing part of it all was like okay that well yeah i didn't that, expect that I, but that's not what i i like that a lot because be. that scene was a little weird because it's almost they almost play it like he's a badass but you know yeah. that that is not at all how he sees himself mm-hmm. and so then you start thinking back and you start realizing all all the times he was telling father flynn it's like no i've done horrible things and the fact that you know he's probably shooting up heroin to you know cope with all of this stuff it, it right. makes a lot of sense in hindsight and the fact that it's basically out of nowhere kind of fits with the rest of the movie there yeah. were a lot of things that were just kind of out of nowhere because it's mm-hmm. always following one character at a time yeah and there's no way every character is going to know everything about everyone else mm-hmm. all the time so yeah no he he it took a long time but he was he was also one of my favorites him jeff yeah. bridges and darling sweet yeah, I think their little the triangle were the best part mm-hmm. to me. Yeah, and John Hamm, I love seeing John Hamm and everything. Like, I yeah, no, he, he was, was great. Good. He was just I, he wasn't in it for very long. Yeah, I mean Dakota Johnson, like it's not that she wasn't in it long. It's just that I think she had one of the weaker, uh, like I said, if backstories to play with. So I like, thought that Terrifica, she is like there I just th- wasn't much. I to thought do. that her storyline could have been one of the best because that's a pretty powerful motivation. You know, trying to save her sister. You know, from, from this crazy person. Yeah, it, yeah. You can. That's a. You know, you can make that really powerful. Mm-hmm. But if the person, if we don't know anything about who she's saving him from and why it's so hard for her to save her from him, then it just doesn't really work. Plus, yeah. this is unrelated, but I don't buy it when Dakota Johnson swears. It. <laughs> I just don't buy it. There, she. She tries to like sound really intimidating, like when she was yelling at John Hamm through the door. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I didn't buy it. That's fair. I was like, oh, you should do another take. Mm. But other than that. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Did you, do you know who Nick Offerman is? Oh, yeah. Were you happy oh, yeah. to see him? <laughs> like my buddy, <laughs> my buddy next to me looks over and he's like, I had no idea he was going to be in this. And, I'll, and I and I saw his name appear in like commercials or whatever. Yeah. But like they didn't show anything for him, obviously. Yeah, no. And I for saw, good reason. I, I love that opening him, but... shot, you know, just yeah, that kind of time too. lapse thing. Yeah, um, I did too. And then he gets you know his back blown out <laughs> yeah <laughs> his, literally. who i'm assuming was his their other accomplice i think that's what i got from it was because oh right jeff bridges crew it was him nick offerman and then the third guy the third guy but then obviously jeff bridges yeah gets thrown in the slammer when their deal goes wrong yeah 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 so yeah i kind of assumed when i saw that and then thought back to the beginning i was like oh okay his their other teammate or crew member which would explain why he was so casual him. with um, yeah. walking away from the door when he answers it to him. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. That was a smart that was smart thinking. Mm-hmm. No, but like I said, like I I mean I tried to put it into words in my review, but it's it's a movie that 
towards the end kind of seemed like it was trying to get at something serious, you know, like that, that kind of the whole vibe of people trying to get out of their past and make a better life for themselves and how it's never too late to do that. Cause you kind of, you kind of get that with Jeff Bridges. He's, he's, you know, he's an old, he's an old guy who's not going to, he doesn't have a whole lot of days left. So he's trying to help Darlene sweet, give her the majority of the money. And then Miles' character, obviously, he just wants all he wants to do is repent. <laughs> it's really sad. For his sins. Um, right. uh, Dakota Johnson's trying to get her sister out of mm. out of that hell. Uh, so there are a lot of things about turn that phone off, Cody. Um, but so I like that that it's kind of seemed like it was going for that towards the end, but I didn't really get any of that until like the second half last third of the movie. I would have Mm -hmm. liked if kind of that theme was more prevalent all the way through. It was sort of like, as he was writing it he kind of drew Goddard like, Oh, this could be the theme. And then just kind of came up with it towards the end, but then didn't really go back and see if he could weave it into it. Mm -hmm. Um, So I feel like that would have made the movie a little bit stronger, but I still thought that that ending was a pretty powerful, um, ending i was not expecting it to be as happy as it was yeah like optimistic i I guess yeah i thought at least like well (laughs) i don't want to take too much away from the uh too much of a spoiler from this but we've uh, we've spoiled a lot i guess that's true yeah (laughs) but it definitely came out on a happier note than i thought it was going to intend to and i think it was okay with that yeah no i i really really like that yeah i thought i was expecting it was going to be kind of this cynical nihilistic everybody dies in the end and sure you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I thought it was actually a really strong decision to have that kind of redemption arc for Miles and Jeff Bridges and just give Darlene the happy ending that she desperately deserved. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a, it's a movie that it, it's not as strong as it could be, but I really like all of the things that are there. Yeah. That's sure. how I would describe it. Well, I definitely was think, thinking coming out of this that it was just like a fun time kind of can turn your brain off type of movie but like talking with you a lot more about it like there's definitely a lot to delve into this more than you would think and i i like that i like that i got that experience oh yeah after the fact one random thing also about dakota johnson's character is (laughs) i i was so bothered by when we first see her hauling who we find out is her sister but you know at the time we're assuming that dakota johnson murdered this woman and she's trying to hide the body. Right. She just like leaves her hotel room door wide open as she's like <laughs> tying up this that. corpse. And <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, okay, may, are you gonna cl- come on, close the door? And usually things like that aren't don't bother right. me because it sounds kind of nitpicky, like, but it's like, oh. dude, like <laughs> you are tying up a corpse yeah. to a chair right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, just uh, close your door. <laughs> I mean, uh, Darlene in the next room over was patting her wall so that way she could uh, sing and not make a sound but meanwhile she kidnapped a person and just leaves the door <laughs> wide like, open geez, with the window blind people have wildly different open. ideas of priorities know, like, darlene was being more secretive with what <laughs> she was doing than what um uh dakota johnson's character yeah i was <laughs> I like okay you could that. learn a thing or two from <laughs> yeah. from your neighbor from the neighbor who's not doing anything <laughs> wrong <laughs> oh no there's there are a lot of I guess it's a movie I would describe the the individual parts are better than the sum of the parts. Maybe, maybe that's a little harsh sounding, but Interesting. there are a lot of yeah. it, there are a lot of specific scenes and aspects I really really liked. Like like you just saying when we see Darlene putting up the the foam in her room, or we see uh, Father Flynn like hacking away at his floor. Mm-hmm. There are all of these things that are presented through the perspective of a, of a char- of another character who doesn't know what's going on, and you're. They're so weird that you're like, what? What are what they could doing? Possibly be happening. And then when you finally discover what they're actually doing, they all it fits perfectly, yeah. and they kind of weave together. They're all related, and it's like, oh, he was doing that because he was trying to do this, mm-hmm. but really, that's involved with this character. Yeah. And even the whole date rape thing, I totally bought that too. He's like, I wasn't trying to fondle you or anything. I was just right. trying to. I needed to go into your room, and I didn't want to you know, hurt you. Yeah, right. It's like okay, that's really messed up, but I totally buy it. I don't. Th- I yeah. I believe you. Mm-hmm. No, there's just a lot of nice little interactions. Like I loved this the conversation between him and Darlene in the car when it's raining, and she, you know, he's trying to get her to believe him. It's a great scene. Like like no, just 
you just trust me. You can have the money. I just yeah. I need to go into your room and right, right, <laughs> dig right. up your floor. Um, and then her timing, her collapse while she's singing with yeah. him pounding the hammer or the crowbar to wedge up the floorboards. Another great scene. Yeah, there are just lots of really creative set pieces um, throughout the whole movie that I really, really enjoyed. Not Going back to those scenes, like one thing that I found really good about this movie was its sound design sound mixing it's well it's use of sound oh yeah pretty much like it's really it, it just sounds well, it's funny but it sounds amazing in the theater yeah. like there's oh, so yeah. many impactful moments that well, all work of the, because of the sound use. all of the technical aspects of it like the the sound design and right. the music choice the sound yep. you know everything the set design the all camera the work design, the yes. co- the costumes it it was a damn well made movie <laughs> award season should hopefully look at this movie because there's yeah, it, a lot of things that it could there's a lot of technical things that it could be yeah i can see the technical like, stuff I, yeah i highly doubt it'll get any of the other stuff uh um, i could only but well costume design, set design or production design uh stuff like that i i could i could see by the slimmest chance i could see um Oh, the woman who played Darlene Sweets, uh, uh, Cynthia... Cynthia Erivo. Yeah. Erivo? I don't know how you say her last name. Neither do I. Uh, but I thought she was one of the standouts in that movie. And could, oh, yeah. And could, by the slimmest margin, could get a Maybe. supporting actress. Of all, the, of, all the, of, of all the people in there, yeah. But, I mean, again, slimmest chance, and yeah. is she I'm in, sure there's going to be other roles. This is unrelated, but is she in Widows? She is. Okay, she's the one who has the blonde hair in that one, right? Yes. Because I don't yeah. think I've ever seen her before. At least I don't recognize her. Right. But I thought she was phenomenal in this, so I'm going to have to keep her on my radar. Yeah, for sure. So, and I Anyway, but uh, it's technically amazing to watch. Like It's a fun movie to watch. Uh, unfortunately, it's not doing too well until the no, weekend. No, it's, it's just... It's one of those movies where I'm sure it'll have kind of a smaller following and fan base when it, you know, if it's the cliche, once it's on Netflix kind of thing, you know. Um, but I feel like for the mainstream audience, again, based on my theater reaction, I think it was just a little too weird, a little too out there. There's too many twists and turns because while some people in the theater, when they were going like, what the heck? I'm sure that was like out of like, oh my God, I love this. That was... This is so crazy and unpredictable. Unpre- yeah. But I feel like those exact same reasons are what other people didn't like about it. Yeah. They're like, I can't keep up with this. This is what's going to happen next. Now that person's probably going to shoot that person. Right. So they probably kind of checked out. Um, Which is such a shame. Yeah. But I mean, there's just it's so under- much. I mean, it's, so many what can you expect? And, yeah. I did. I was surprised that it did as poorly as it did. Oh, for sure. You know, I never thought it was going to be huge, but with a cast that stacked and, you know, I thought some people would turn out. Like, could make a couple mil more yeah. than seven mil or whatever it was that it did make. At least the, you know, the moms who want to see shirtless Chris Hemsworth. Because there, there, there were two, uh, maybe their moms, I don't know. There are two middle-aged women sitting in the <laughs> row in front of me. And when Chris Hemsworth first came on they were like like clapping to themselves oh, and mean, nudging each them? other like oh here he is this is why we're here this is the whole reason why we came oh, to this my movie goodness. <laughs> but then they see how fucked up he is yeah. <laughs> they're probably like uh oh oh <laughs> well at least um, he's got abs <laughs> it's like yeah his his body is really sexy but i don't like what he's i don't like what yeah. he's doing Just right tune now it out, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> martha or whatever their uh, names were <laughs> yeah that's funny though yeah it's it's probably such a niche. Is that the right use of that word? Yeah, niche film to uh, try to market out to a wide variety of people. But if you get a chance to, like, go ahead and try and see it. Like, it's worth your time. I would yeah, say. while you still can. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that was the only movie I was able to check out. I still need to see First Man, which I'm super excited for. I feel like I'm gonna be late to the game on First Man. I'm already late to the game, and well, that's yeah. also doing pretty poorly, at least by expect it's underperforming is what i should say i don't want to say poorly i mean in terms of some biographies at this time of year like it's not a surprising number but yeah people did expect it to make a little more i don't I know think it's biopics, hard to say how it looks it seems like biopics time. that aren't about famous musicians and bands must be falling by the wayside right now because yeah. i'm sure bohemian rhapsody is going to be huge oh, rocket man yeah. will probably be huge but you don't, I mean, you just don't really see a whole lot of biopics that everybody's talking about. Right. 
I guess you haven't really for a while now. But yeah, I can't really think of one where universally everyone was like, "Oh man, yeah, what you got to go see this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows? Yeah. So I mean, while those films failed at like the box office, like the newest Halloween is probably going to do pretty well. And oh, it's, it's going to smash. Yeah. For sure. I'm seeing it tonight. I'm super excited. Oh, I will too. I'll probably see you there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Depending on which showtime I catch. Yeah. I'm trying to go to the earlier one. Uh, yeah, so before we go see that one, though, we had to talk about the original. Oh, yeah. Um, I had to revisit it. Yeah. Well, had you seen it before? Had you ever seen it before? Or? You know, it, it, I was never big on horror growing up. Yeah, like, same, still, yeah same here. I'm still a wuss, so I same did here. check it out pretty recently, but I man, did I enjoy it. Yeah, no, it's... Man, did I it's enjoy just a it. great little movie. It, that's the thing, though. Like you, like as as someone coming in and hearing about like the Halloween franchise and how um, so many of them have been made into sequels or whatever. Like I thought, yeah, this must be like... a big movie. If people get nope, it's just a small. Oh, it's so. I mean, just a small movie. I watched about it when I was slasher trying to kill teenagers. <laughs> I watched it when I was fairly young. I wasn't like super young, but I wasn't you know super into movies yet. Sure. Um. At a time where the idea of scary movies was scarier than the movies probably were themselves to sure. me. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I covered my eye because my mom and my aunt, they were like, this movie terrified us when we were little. Yeah. We're going to show you. <laughs> and so, you know, they would let You're me know. you are going to have the trauma with us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but then rewatching it now, I, yeah, I was just stunned by how simple it is. I mean, it's incredibly. But it, yet it works. Yeah, it's like it flies by. It's yeah. it's so I mean yeah. it, the whole movie is basically these two houses across the street from each other, a couple scenes on their high school campus. Right. But it's so crazy seeing the origins of these tropes that we have grown up knowing. Right. Like every movie, every slasher movie follows these beats. Because, and it's just so crazy. That was the original, right? Well, like that's... well, yeah, it's crazy to see a movie that you know, basically spelled out what the genre is like 100%. Like not really a whole lot of slash movies have come along and really evolved it or expanded upon it. Um, because it, everything was there from the beginning. Like, yeah, yeah, movies can be way more grisly and violent Mm -hmm. and show more nudity and stuff like that. But Halloween was kind of, I mean, you can't really improve on almost perfection. You know, I don't, I mean, I'm not calling the movie perfect, <laughs> yeah. but as far as how influential it is, you don't really see a whole lot of other movies that can hold a candle to that in terms of how many rules they wrote from the very beginning. Right, right. Because, yeah, I mean, everything that you think about when you think of slasher movies is in this movie, mm-hmm. uh, but watching it, it's... Because it's so easy to rip on slasher movies. You know, oh, teenagers oh, yeah. are so stupid. All these movies are the mm-hmm. same, blah, 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 blah. But it's so crazy when you go back and watch this one. You're not really bothered by that. Mm. And not even just because you're telling yourself, this is the original, I have to respect it. It's just, that's just how it is. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I should be asking you, is the first time you watched it, like, what, I mean, what did you like about it? <laughs> I guess. I, I liked the mystery behind Michael Myers. Like there was, there wasn't really, it's just kind of, it's, I mean, it does explain like how he is the way he is, but at the same time, it really doesn't. It never tells you why it just tells you this is how he's always been. Exactly. (laughs) Like the beginning scene is probably one of my favorite scenes. Oh yeah. I'm still remembering because it's just this simple tracking shot that, Mm -hmm. that has us, the viewer viewing the, the situation and viewing what's going on as him, as a younger kid, and just getting himself prepared and going to yeah. kill his sister. And but the whole time... It works so well. And, well. and you're like, it explains why he's so demented. But at the same time, it doesn't explain why he's so demented. No, and I, I love it. I love that opening shot. Cause it, I mean, it, it, it tells you everything about the movie. Like, it, it's the perfect encapsulation of the, the movie you're about to right. see. It gives you, you know, it gives you the kind of promiscuous teenagers. It gives you yep. the, the dark foreboding suburban neighborhood right it gives you the, the the breathing even though he's a little kid at this point yeah you know it's all of the stuff and just the way the camera floats around it's that's a good way to say it. i mean it's a sp- that combined with when you see his face when his parents take the mask off of him oh right then you get the sense like 
he probably didn't know at, at all what he was doing while at the same time like and that it's hard to explain but that's why i love uh, that's what i love about it because you you just get the sense like oh that's it's just evil he's yeah, just, you know, just, he's just evil. evil and that may be easy to say but when you see it the fact that you don't know why is really scary <laughs> yeah and you also get that sense from the, his victims themselves like none of these victims stand out at all like not even jamie no. lee curtis's character no is exactly a stand at all she's great oh yeah but she's, the actress she, is great, she's fantastic the character is not well, great well that's because the characters are all just your average teenagers yeah they, they don't need to give you a whole bunch of whatever the only thing we know about her is that she takes her job her babysitting job a little more seriously right she takes school a little you more know? seriously we don't really know anything about her other than she's a more responsible mature person compared yeah. to her friends yeah so while so while with these characters like we don't feel any connection to them we at least feel <laughs> compassion to them when michael is attacking them because they're just being teenagers and nothing yeah. else like we, <laughs> we us have having been teenagers growing up like we can understand like we're just doing stuff like this because we're teenagers and we're having fun but the fact they add in the mix that a yeah, it's Halloween. Halloween's killer. supposed to be, yeah. you know, depending on your age, it's always just supposed to be a fun, carefree, whatever. Yeah, a fun, good time. But it's like, then oh, you just add kidding. In, you add in a murderer <laughs> chasing after you and killing you. Like, that That can add a, I don't know, that that just adds, like, a, a little element where you're like, man, like, that is just scary. Yeah. Because it could happen. Like, it just felt real and you felt compassion for the innocent because nothing yeah. about them was bad. Mm -hmm. It's just that they were caught up with his attacks. Yeah, and no, I, I like, and that goes back to how simple, like everything about this it, this became. Like just how ninety minutes this genre is flies by. It does very by. clearly distinguish acts one, two, and mm -hmm. three, and not a single unnecessary scene or anything. It's just yeah, boom, 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 boom. And it's not like they do anything big uh, to make Michael scare at all. Like it's just a guy in a mask with a knife every once in a while. Yeah. Like there's no effect that's like trying to get you that jump scare or nothing like it's nope. just perfectly timing him in certain spots and situations in like the darkness or like behind a bush or something oh, yeah. and it's just smartly played and i <laughs> hope that goes into this newest one yeah too. that's why i'm really really excited i think it will i think it will every i mean all of the things i'm reading people are varying in you know, how great they say it is but e almost everybody seems to agree that it understands what made the first one so great and then it respects that while at the same time yeah. expanding and um adding to just kind of the whole mystery the whole universe of halloween yeah and it seems like the creators of this new one uh david uh david gordon green yeah david gordon green and uh danny, danny McBride, mcbride weirdly enough <laughs> I, know. But I love it though like they just came to john carpenter and jamie lee Curtis, and they were like we're fans of this and like, we're huge fans of this who? like here is our take on like what a sequel could be and i love that they were on board and well yeah who i this. forget the studio that had the rights to halloween the original one yeah mm. but then they lost the rights because they didn't make a halloween movie in a certain amount of time right so then these people were like okay we now have the opportunity to make Was a good Fox? halloween sequel let's do we have your blessing can we do this and john carpenter's you know he's an old man he doesn't really care but he's like well yeah i mean if you if we can make a good one that would be cool better than a 10th terrible sequel yeah true true but I, I think he while he may not care he might have just liked what he heard yeah no, I'm not, i don't want to say he doesn't care he he, mm -hmm. he apparently loves it like I've, I've read and seen interviews with him about it and he's seems to really like what they've done um who knows how much of that is genuine and how much of it he's just a nice guy so he's gonna say that in, in an interview but yeah i'm optimistic about it i really am yeah, me too, and the buzz on it is helping as well. Plus, so. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis coming back, she's going to be badass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, anytime you see Jamie Lee Curtis peeling out of, in a truck and just yelling at you to go home, no matter if yeah. it's Halloween or not, like, I'm going to listen. I'm going to book it the other way. <laughs> I'm going to be safe in my home. I'm mm -hmm. going to listen to Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, she's just amazing in everything she does, and I'm glad that uh, cause I think it's been a while since she's acted, so I'm glad that she's coming back yeah. to like oh, yeah. do this one justice, especially in like a big role like this. Yeah, she's and it, show and the it world makes sense too. We, like it why we've been missing like, her. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like it doesn't feel like it's gonna be forced at all. Like no. it feels like her journey is gonna make a lot of sense when we see it. Yeah, no, I feel like this is the perfect way, or totally how she would be. 
at oh, this yeah. point. Just yeah, I would be crazy. And... On the brink of insanity. Yeah, after that happened to me, <laughs> I would absolutely. every second of every day for 40 years, just like, <laughs> you know, looking over a shoulder and booby trapping our house i just the one thing i might find funny in the movie is if like her daughter and granddaughter like just can't believe her like to an extent because like she did experience something tragic growing up so yeah. like i i would i hope like they don't play it off too much as her as them being like completely uninterested in what she has to say like i hope mm-hmm. they hear her out to an extent because, like, yeah. I feel like if my parent told me about that, I'd be like, no wonder you're insane. <laughs> like, that makes total, like, like you would feel compassion for them. But instead, they're just like, Mom, you never got attacked. You're <laughs> insane. Like, what? The thing I, oh, she did. <laughs> the thing that I've been theorizing or speculating about is because you know that there's going to be a big final showdown between the two of them. Like, it has oh, yeah. to happen. Oh, but yeah. I, I, part of me wants her to die, but take him down with her. You know, kind of like that would be because like the whole idea is that he I mean, he got shot six times like in the face. Yeah. And he just kind of got up and walked away. And, you know, he's. (laughs) Yeah. But I like I would love there a scene where Jamie Lee Curtis just goes insane and, you know, like double, triple, quadruple, quintuple taps him, you know, just like you know, stabbing him repeatedly or something or what if, takes him with her off a cliff. I don't know. she turns so insane um, killing Michael that, like, she puts on the mask <laughs> and then she becomes, like, Michaela Myers or something? Oh, <laughs> well, man. Like, what, would you want that? I, I kind of want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting. I do want to see her, like, snap. Because, like, maybe yeah. only true insanity can take this thing down. Like you, she I has mean, to, you know, become whatever it is yeah. that he is, in order to match him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, or you know, if not, cool. They leave it open, and yeah. maybe she'll come back. But I don't see that happening, especially if they're introducing another two subsequent generations of Strodes. I feel like she's gonna go down. Maybe, maybe Michael probably won't die again, and then it'll like go to Judy Greer. <laughs> I feel we, like that's the really safe we, and predictable see, route. Do we want to see Judy Greer take that role? Something tells me Judy Greer is not on the same level as Jamie Lee Curtis. As, as, <laughs> as fantastic films. that she is and whatever she does, like she Some roles are just meant for certain types of people. Yeah. Um, and I feel like people say that a lot when it comes to Judy Greer in, in general. Like she always gets yeah. the short end of the stick in a lot of her roles. <laughs> Sad, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, I mean, I don't want to see her take that role that we're talking about, but... <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm for my own personal, <laughs> you know, theorizing, yeah, I'm yeah. calling it that Jamie Lee Curtis is going to take him down with her. And that will just be awesome. And then I wouldn't be surprised if it's like an, a genuinely bittersweet ending. You know, maybe they're yeah. mourning the, lo- the death of her mom mm-hmm. and her grandma. Right. But, whew. That's what it took to get rid of Michael Myers. And then we see his grave and a hand come, p- p- pops up. Dun, dun, dun. You know, sequels. Yeah. <laughs> One more thing I want to say about the original, the score. Oh. Is yes. iconic. <laughs> yes, Fantastic. I know. John Carpenter, can't, he's said many times he can't read a note, a note of sheet music, whatever. Jeez. But, you know, he can sit down and he knows what sounds cool. He, yeah compose the whole thing in three days wow. and at the same time you can kind of you can kind of tell it's like it sounds like a dude at a piano you know oh yeah um but that doesn't heart that doesn't tarnish it whatsoever mm-hmm. you know it's it 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 matches the simplicity of the movie perfectly like every Absolutely. every aspect of the, the creepiness every creepiness aspect of this movie comes down to just being like bare bones because it was the it was a tiny budget independent movie yeah for sure you know they did what they could with what they had Mm -hmm. and man did they make it work yeah it's it's so good do you like the newest version uh based on the trailers because it sounds like much more modern but it still has that yeah no i mean element of what it was uh back in the day that element that melody is just so perfect that you really can't make it bad yeah i feel like and obviously they're not gonna mess with it too much you know probably just update the recording equipment mm. quality and so yeah i'm I, I just know the first time that uh melody starts playing in this one you know the fans of the audience are gonna be like okay oh it's th- it's going down oh yeah oh i wouldn't be surprised yeah 
And hopefully it's as good as people saying it, because, like, if they had applause, like, right away, and then it's, like, <laughs> bad in the next 20 minutes, then it's just going to yeah. be such a letdown. But I mean, I guess this, the 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 original one that we're talking about literally starts with that. You know, it's just the right. black screen and the jack-o'-lantern, which is a beautiful way to, like, start the movie. It's <laughs> I like, know, oh, right? my <laughs> God. I, it's, it makes me, like, genuinely scared of jack-o'-lanterns. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody carves them because, like, it's a fun Halloween thing to do. Then this movie, it shows you, you it's like, <laughs> it shows you, like, the most generic-looking jack-o'-lantern ever. Mm-hmm. But then you add that music and just slowly zoom in. It's like, okay, I hate jack o They're terrifying. <laughs> they're, they're so <laughs> creepy. <laughs> so I don't know if the new one will just, you know, have like an homage kind of open exactly like that. I really don't think it will. Yeah. I think they're going to save that save that melody for the perfect, the perfect moment. And I feel like it'll hit. I want it to hit. Yeah, let's hope it hits. So yeah, no, I'm just really excited. Just like what, three hours left before? Yeah, Three, four give hours. Or take. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Do you have anything more to say about uh, this movie at all? Uh, you can see Eric's breakdown of it also on our site. So check that out. It's a really great article. Well done. Mm, thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, do you got anything else, else um, to say about it? No. I mean, you should probably see it before you see the new one. Because I, I would say at least do it for the fun, fun of it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's an older movie, but that. It's just part of the charm. Like right. these are time capsules, and yeah, they should be seen as such. Uh, but no, I mean, other than that, no, just go see the new one. Yeah, I have to agree with that. <laughs> all right, so cool. We'll just uh, end our episode there for the day, and hopefully, our next episode will talk all about this new Halloween. Like, did it hold up, or is mm-hmm. it as great as the first one? Maybe those are do you know, we'll have a breakdown of it. Yeah, cool. Well. I look forward to that. Awesome. All right, guys. Until next time. Talk to you guys later.